In my eyes, he built me, he built George St. Pierre, he built us. It was like a monument, it was like a legend, he was the best fighter of all time. Oh, Matt Hughes showing incredible character! I think it showed a lot of people that have got a lot of heart and desire to win. And some guys give up in there and they'll look for a way to get out. And I didn't do that. Two-time UFC welterweight champion and Hall of Famer Matt Hughes has gone down in history as one of the greatest UFC competitors and mixed martial arts fighters of all time. Defeating names like Renzo Gracie, BJ Penn, and Matt Serra, Matt Hughes was pound for pound the best MMA fighter in the world. My practices and my workouts were open. My opponents wouldn't come watch me. That was fine with me because I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pick you up, I'm gonna slam you down, and I'm gonna beat you up on the ground. And if you can stop that, you get your hand raised. Matt Hughes changed the sport of MMA when he proved time and time again that not only was he a brutal powerhouse, but a submission specialist. Mixing grappling styles like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, catch wrestling, and Russian Sambo, he became a force to be reckoned with. As soon as the bell rang in the octagon, he went in for the kill. Never wanting to win on points, this Illinois farm boy known for his brutal slams was either going to knock you out or force you to tap out. He ended his career with a record of 45 wins and nine losses but he'd learned that going up against some of the greatest fighters in the UFC couldn't hold a candle to the biggest fight of his life. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to Ultimate Fighting Network to find out more about fighters like Matt Hughes. Matt Hughes was born in 1973 in the small town of Hillsboro, Illinois. Living on a farm and growing up with a rambunctious twin brother, Hughes was put to work at an early age and built up the strength that would slowly mold him into the champion that we know him as today. Matt's first fights would start at home with his brother. Fighting, throwing wrenches at each other, screwdrivers, and punching each other. So I grew I grew up wild. Uh, we had about 100 head of cattle when I was growing up and uh, 1,500 acres, corn, beans, and wheat. <laughs> that farm made me who I am. Uh -huh. uh, with the hard work that I had to do and growing up with a twin brother, those two things are really put me on the map for being an athlete. You work, up, you work from sunup to sundown. Yeah. Hughes began his martial arts career at an early age, joining his high school wrestling team and dominating on the mats in his weight class. At 145 pounds, Hughes became a two-time state wrestling champion and finished high school with a career of 131 wins and only two losses. He went undefeated in both his junior and senior years. We always call it an arm in front headlock. So I'm actually, it's a blood choke, you know, I'm choking the blood off. But I mean, people get very confident with their arm in there, but it's something where I can put a lot of power on it and, and I've choked a lot of people out with it. He had the fighting spirit and will to win from an early age, and this would lay the foundation of the empire that he created for himself. It gave him the basic knowledge and building blocks to what would become an unstoppable fighting style the world of MMA had never seen before. I think it's one of the things that um, should be a, a huge base for you because the wrestlers get to pick where the fight's fought at. If I'm fighting you, Muhammad Ali, I can take you down off your feet and beat you on the ground. If I'm fighting a great uh, jiu-jitsu guy, I can use my wrestling defensively, keep him on his feet and try and outstrike him there. So the, the, the wrestler gets to pick where the battle's fought at. Hugh's wrestling career didn't stop there. He graduated high school and wrestled in college, weighing in at 158 pounds eventually placing third in the nation. That drive and natural talent would allow him to compete in the ADCC Submission Wrestling World Championship with a record of two wins and two losses and face off against the likes of Ricardo Almeida and Tito Ortiz. It's tough to imagine, but the UFC wasn't always what it is today, and being a part of the organization meant you were a tough son of a gun. You had to earn your place there, and someone had to see the fight in you early on. But in small shows like everybody else, you know, back then we didn't have the ultimate fighter where you could jump around on a reality show and, and walk into the UFC. So uh, it was a ladder. You just you just worked worked your way up the ladder, and uh, one win went to another fight, and you just kept fought, fighting. Matt Hughes had to literally fight to earn his keep. He had to take men down to the mat in the hopes that his prowess would lead somewhere. And thankfully, it did. Hughes had a manager who would help to give him the exposure that he would need. And in 1999, at the age of 26, Hughes finally got his shot at the big leagues. His time had come at UFC 22, and he won by unanimous decision against Valery Ignatov. This was the start of his meteoric rise through the ranks of the UFC, the likes of which had never been seen before. Over 
Over the years, he would become known for his use of brutal slams, ground and pound, and submissions to take down some of the UFC's top competitors who put the sport on the map. That's it! All over! Matt Hughes has defeated Hoist Gracie! To the undisputed UFC Walter Wade Champion of the World! This couldn't possibly prepare Hughes for what would come next. In 2017, tragedy struck the welterweight champ. Terrible news for Matt Hughes. The former welterweight champion's pickup truck was hit by a train on Friday. 43-year-old was seriously injured. Matt Hughes was in a near-fatal accident when his car was hit by a train. His vehicle was thrown, and the accident resulted in severe brain and bodily injury. He would never be the same again. But it wasn't the end. This was a new type of fight. He was fighting for his life. After waking up from a coma, Hughes was unable to walk and with serious brain damage affecting his speech and memory, this was worse than any bout he'd seen in the octagon. Having been deprived of what he loved most, the champ fell into a deep depression and could barely recognize himself. But his team never gave up on him. And soon, something in him changed. When people look back and they think about Matt Hughes, I just want them to think I'm a, I'm a fierce competitor. No matter what circumstances I'm in, you, know, you can't count me out. The beloved champion made his way to Medellin, Colombia to aid in his recovery. He had to learn to walk and speak again, something he never thought he'd have to overcome. But using stem cell therapy, the Hall of Famer found hope. He started moving and started speaking again, and his short-term memory was slowly returning. He even started hitting the gym again. After what might have been the end for most people, Matt Hughes came back to life. He proved to himself, his fans, and the world of MMA that he can't be beaten. The fighting spirit instilled in him since childhood kept him alive and kept him moving forward even in his darkest moments. Although we won't see him fight again, Matt Hughes has shown us that this isn't the last we'll see of him. He inspired many to fight, to be better, and to persevere in the face of darkness. He's a fighter. You either are or you aren't, and Matt Hughes is. He dominated the weight class, he broke records, he beat the greatest fighters of his era. What does the future hold for Matt Hughes? And will we ever see his presence again at the UFC? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And remember to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll catch you next time.